How can we increase the opportunities for a healthy mental work environment? What are the arguments to create a healthy mental work environment? Well, there are humanitarian arguments, such as preventing occupational injuries to promote people's quality of life. However, there are also business-related arguments, such as decreasing the cost for sickness absence, interim staff and rehabilitation. Furthermore, it makes the workplace more attractive since a larger amount of people want to work in a healthy work environment, which in turn increases productivity, global competition, innovation and growth. There are also arguments for the societal economy. We want to prevent exclusion from working life, straining health care, sickness absence, rehabilitation and retraining, which comes to great costs for society. Organizations and enterprises do worse due to unhealthy mental work environment, which affects society through decreased revenue and increased expenses, for example, the risk of increased unemployment. A healthy work environment enables and ensures that more people can participate in working life and in the labour force, and through this contribute to a positive societal development through increased efficiency, increased production and increased product development, as well as increased learning and knowledge in society. A healthy mental work environment concerns everyone in the workplace. A healthy mental work environment in an organization or enterprise needs to permeate the culture through the entire organization, from the top management to all employees and from all employees to the top management. Be thorough with information. To be well informed of what's going on, this increases the risk of insecurity, guesses, fake news and that imagination source regarding risks of what can happen or what has happened. Therefore, the dissemination of information is important in order to decrease stress. Lack of information is a common reason for in experienced insecurity, stress reactions and ill health related to stress. Make routines to ensure that everyone receives sufficient and comprehensible information. In times of change or when insecurity arises, it's often important to inform, even if the message is that there's no new information. Therefore, sufficient information is of great importance when changes are made. However, it's important to make considerations regarding how, what and who should take part of information, since too much information can cause stress in itself, especially if it regards something the individual has no use for. All information demands the employees to take action and ask themselves, do I need to take in this information? Energy and time is spent on deciding whether it's necessary and useful to take in. The employee needs to process and assess the information and decide whether they need to act and react or not. Too much information can therefore constitute another task that need to be executed through the workday. This can add up to a pile of work tasks con consisting of sorting what, through what information is relevant and what's not relevant before the employee can take part of the information that is actually relevant. Accessibility to information for all employees is important, 
so that everyone comprehends and can take part of the information. The information should be sufficient but brief and simple. The information should also be available in different languages. The information should be conveyed in different ways, for example through pictures, text, audio, etc. Information should also simplify doing the right thing. The implementation of routines increases the sense of security for the individual. And the implementation of routines increases the predictability for the individual. Routines and basal work descriptions decrease the risk of ambiguity in work and that the employees experience themselves as vulnerable through, for example, not being able to reach results, goals and aims with the work due to factors out of their control for example, through insufficient resources, insufficient staffing, lack of time, lack of material, etc. But also becoming a target for clients, customers, patients, students or parents' disapproval and anger towards the organization or enterprise. Routines and preparation for emergencies, when an employee is subjected to threats and violence, fire, evacuation, etc. increases the sense of security for the employees in a case of emergency. Parasec and Theorel describe in their model of demand and control how a mental work environment that contains too high demands, paired with a lack of control, increases the risk of individuals developing ill health and diseases due to stress reactions. Demands in a work environment can be the degree of difficulty in work tasks, the demands for quality and productivity, the amount of work tasks that should be done, and deadlines but also the emotional demands of empathy with the client, patient, etc., as well as being exposed to other people's anger, threats and violence. Control in work means the capacity for action through the competence an individual has got for their work, as well as the possibility to make decisions regarding their own work. This contributes to the control of a situation, as well as the demands. Insufficient information to make decisions or IT issues can contribute to an employee experiencing frustration and lack of control. Stress and the experience of control of the work demands are closely connected, since stress increases when an individual experiences a lack of control of a situation. Social support from, for example, managers or co-workers contributes to a sense of security, even in situations with a lack of control of the work demands. Individuals who experience a healthy social support have proven to develop less stress symptoms than others. Examples of social support is the participation and inclusion in a group or community in the workplace, guidelines for work tasks, feedback and appreciation for what has been executed or performed. Individuals that experience high demands from work or from themselves need support in different ways. If one experiences social support, one will more easily cope with high demands. Correspondingly, one can become stressed due to rather low demands if one cannot control the situation or does not receive any social support or help. However, all individuals do not react the same to this kind of stress. It's important to remember that what constitutes high demands and what constitutes control of a situation and what constitutes social support differ between different individuals in different situations and circumstances. A healthy workplace strives for balance 
with the individual employee experiences a level of demand that they can cope with and where there are possibilities to influence their own work situation and where there is a sound social support in the organisation. What factors are important in order to experience a sound mental health in working life? It's important to experience self-confidence and self-awareness, self-realization, independence, perception of reality, as well as ability to cope with a particular situation or circumstances. Please take a few moments to consider and reflect on the following questions. What can be done about the stresses in your mental work environment? And what can be done about the stresses in your co-workers' individual mental work environment?